This video was brought to you by our brand new channel, TLDR Business. Subscribe by clicking the link in the description. As you might have noticed, semiconductors have become a bit of a hot topic in recent years. That's because they're crucial components in pretty much all technology, and as such, their production has become a geopolitical problem in the context of the growing tension between China and Taiwan. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the semiconductor issue, proceeding in three stages. Firstly, we'll take a look at what semiconductors are and why they matter. Secondly, we'll be taking a look at where the market leaders in production are based. Hint, it's Taiwan. And thirdly, we'll be taking a look at why Taiwan's position as the leading producer might be cause for geopolitical concern, given the importance of the product and Taiwan's vulnerability to Chinese aggression. Described by Samsung as the seed for electronic devices, semiconductors are essential for everything from ATMs to smartphones, trains, fridges, almost any electronic device that you can think of. In scientific lingo, semiconductors are crystalline solids that are halfway between conductors and insulators in terms of electrical conductivity. In other words, semiconductors can only partially conduct electricity, and in many cases, their conductivity can be altered by changing the semiconductor's temperature and purity. The most common semiconductor element is silicon, and most semiconductors can be found in the so-called metalloid staircase of the periodic table. However, putting science to a side, when politicians and journalists talk about semiconductors in the news, they often use the word semiconductor to mean any device that includes semiconductor elements, like microchips. Now, microchips are made by shaping a semiconductor into a wafer-thin disk and then using a powerful light to inscribe them with a certain message. These patterns are designs of electronic circuits, and materials can then be added to them which allow parts of the patterns to act as mini-components by changing the conductivity of the silicon beneath. Combined, all of these tiny components make up what's called an integrated circuit, and these are the backbone for most of our technology today. To give you a sense of the complexity of this, Today, the most advanced microchip components are just 3 nanometers, or about 30,000 times thinner than a human hair. Anyway, generally there are two stages to the microchip production process. The first is the design stage, and the second, the manufacturing stage. Now, some companies do both, but most specialize in just one. Companies that do the design stage are known as fabless firms, whereas companies who focus on the manufacturing or fabrication stage are known as fabs or foundries. Now, this process is very expensive. The most advanced fabs, capable of manufacturing those three nanometer transistors we mentioned earlier, would need tens of billions of dollars for the initial setup of the plant, alongside hundreds of millions of dollars for each machine that inscribes the circuits onto the silicon disks. For example, the fab currently being built in Arizona by the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, otherwise known as TSMC, has an estimated cost of $12 billion and could easily end up costing significantly more. It's these prohibitively high entrance costs that are one of the reasons that microchip manufacturing, and especially advanced microchip manufacturing, is today dominated by just a few firms. According to analysis by The Economist in January 2021, there are only three firms capable of manufacturing the most advanced chips, TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. Which brings us onto the second part of our video. Where are the semiconductors designed and manufactured around the world? And what are the geopolitical implications of their organization? Well, while the US is the market leader in designing chips, it has very limited capacity for actually manufacturing them, partly due to the high cost of labor and a skill shortage within the country. Fabrication facilities located in the USA only account for about 12% of the world's semiconductor manufacturing in 2020, down 37% from 1990. 
Manufacturing is instead dominated by TSMC, who are responsible for producing between 50 and 70% of the world's microchips, and something like 95% of the world's advanced microchips. Now, while TSMC does have a couple of factories outside of Taiwan and is actively taking steps to diversify, at least 90% of their chips are still produced on the island, despite the fact that more than 90% of its chips are exported outside of Taiwan. Now, the Chinese government isn't too happy about this, and in 2015, the Made in China 2025 policy was unveiled, which essentially aimed to make China self-sufficient in all strategically important industries, including semiconductors. That's because as things stand, China is the world's largest buyer of microchips, accounting for about 50% of all purchases globally. However, China imports about 70% of those chips, so, Made in China 2025 wants to see this figure fall to 30% by 2025. Accordingly, the CCP has directed a ton of money towards companies like China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or Xeoxin, via the National Integrated Circuits Industry Investment Fund. But while the SMIC has made some impressive progress on its chip designs, it's still way behind the TSMC, and has been further hindered by escalating Western sanctions on technological exports from China. And this is ultimately why semiconductors have become geopolitically important. They're the backbone of today's technology, but both the US and China depend almost entirely on a single company in Taiwan, and neither are entirely comfortable with this setup. The US is worried that the CCP might try to, quote unquote, reunify Taiwan sometime soon, which would leave the US reliant on China for its chips. While the CCP are worried that cooperation between Taiwan and the US will leave China dependent on the Americans for its chips. And it's this geopolitical tension that partly explains why both countries are investing heavily in their domestic chip-making capacity, as well as explaining their escalating tensions over Taiwan. Ultimately, however, total self-sufficiency in chips is nearly impossible. Although TSMC dominates production, it relies on a global supply chain that passes through many different countries. The US supplies them with research, the Netherlands supplies lithography equipment, Japan and European nations provide them with chemicals, while China packages and distributes the finished product. In reality, if China invaded Taiwan, it wouldn't end with one side having a monopoly on microchips. It would probably just mean massive disruption to supply and a terrifying global shortage of one of the world's most crucial pieces of technology, which is yet another reason not to go to war over Taiwan. Ultimately then, while this story does play on international conflicts and disputes, its biggest impact will often be seen through the business lens. So if you want to find out more about that, the interplay of business, politics, culture, and society, then be sure to subscribe to our new channel, TLDR Business. That's our brand new YouTube channel where we'll be unpacking the politics of business, the people, companies, and brands who often hold more power over our world than elected politicians. Now, that channel is brand new, so we only have one video live right now about the secret economics of porn and the rules that two secretive companies make that dictate the porn that can and cannot be made. However, we also have a load of other new videos coming soon, including a breakdown of the ideology of Elon Musk and what he stands for, a video unpacking how Apple spends its huge revenues and their $200 billion bank balance, as well as a video on TikTok, and if they're the ultimate Chinese propaganda tool. And all of those videos will be out very soon, so click the link below, watch the official channel trailer, and subscribe to be notified when they're live.